Okay, we are going to start by talking about cutting tube today. And we're going to demonstrate the hacksaw and then the various uh, the tube cutter. Okay, to begin with on a hacksaw, if you are going to use a hacksaw, you need to make sure you have very fine teeth on your hacksaw because if they're not fine enough, they'll tear the delicate edges of the tube. Uh, obviously, you're going to need to support the tube somehow when you work with it, but uh, we're going to use the vise and it's got some nice aluminum call plates to keep from damaging the sides of the tube. Just chuck it up tight enough to hold it and time for the hacksaw. Okay, we all know how to use a hacksaw. Nice, even, smooth strokes. It cuts on the pull stroke. Not a lot of pressure. Let the saw do the work. And now you can see up on the edge, we've got a lot of burrs that we've got to take care of with the hacksaw. We have a deburring device over here, and that deburring device will cut those burrs out for us with just a couple of nice simple revolutions. And now, to make a very smooth edge, we'll finish our cut with a file. Finish everything off nice and square, and uh, blow out the burrs if necessary. Start from the other side, and that'll give us a nice, proper cut that will flare beautifully when it's time to, uh, to work. Okay, now if we wanted to use a tubing cutter instead of the hacksaw, uh, we would obviously go ahead and chuck our piece of tube in the vise again, or whatever's holding it, and we would get that tubing cutter out. If you take a look at the tubing cutter, there's actually a couple of different styles I'm going to look at here. The first style has got a pair of rollers across the side, and that's important, and we'll just look at more of why that's important in a little bit. Some of the cheaper ones don't have the rollers. They actually distort your tube a little bit more. I prefer not to use that style. Um, the, the tubing cutters are not that expensive, so feel free to go ahead and buy one of those. When you put a tubing cutter on, put the tubing cutter so it's held against the two rollers and tighten it just enough that that wheel makes firm contact. Now, it should just about support itself when we do this, just support itself by that, uh, by the, its own tension. That's the proper amount of tension. I'm going to go ahead and pull that tubing cutter all the way around, and then I'm going to tighten it up just a fraction of a turn and pull it around again. Each time I tighten it up just a fraction of the turn, I'm making the, um, I'm making that little cut just a little bit deeper. And I'm going to keep pulling it around. There is no hurry on this. It doesn't take very long. You also notice that there's no mess. I'm not getting a whole lot of sawdust. But each time I turn this, I'm tightening it up just a fraction of a turn with my right hand as it comes by. You don't even really see it, but I'm doing it. And we are just about through that tube. And there we go. Okay, we've cut the piece off on the tube. And you'll notice when you look real close at the end, it made a beautiful cut, but there is a little bit more of a burr. Most tubing cutters have a deburring device built right into them. And so I'm going to demonstrate the use of the deburring device here on the tube. We're going to stick that into the end. It's actually just a reamer. I'm going to stick it in there and ream the burr out of the end of the tube. Don't want to do it too much or I'm going to distort the tube a bunch, but that'll do. And now, once again, I want to finish it off perfectly flat with my file. Okay, and that reason that it's got to be flat is for when we go to flare the tube, which will be in the next video, hopefully. Okay, here we are. Just kiss the edge just a little bit, and we've got a perfectly cut tube.